I was invited along for an interview. Mr. Johnson was his name, and I went to see him last Wednesday. Yes? Miss Parsons to see you, sir. Miss Parsons? About the vacancy, sir. My replacement. Oh, yes, of course. Send her in. At least, he wasn't quite what I'd been used to meeting at these interviews. I just stood there, speechless. How do you do, Miss Parsons? Hello. Do uh, come in. Sit down. Let me take your coat. Hmm? I say. Thank you. Just, uh... Right, well, I'll uh, just drop down some particulars. Yes, I soon realised that he had more in mind than how many words I could type in a minute. He asked me all the usual questions about qualifying his eyes off me. And you encouraged this? Oh, yes. Well, I did lean over the desk a little to point out a particular line in a reference from a previous employer. His face turned as red as beetroot and his hands started to tremble ever so slightly while he was writing. Were you attracted to him immediately? Oh, absolutely. He was lovely. His eyes were as brown as Omar Sharif's. At what point did you realize you might live out your fantasy with this particular man? When his tongue started to lick my nipples. What? Oh, I did to give me a shorthand test. Well, uh, I'd already thought how nice it would be to give him a lovely longhand test. He gave you a shorthand test? Yes. Now, Miss Parsons, this won't be difficult. I um, promise to go slowly for you. If you could just, uh, take down whatever I say. Of course. Anything, Mr. Johnson. Uh, sirs, further to your letter of the 12th inst, this is to inform you that the consignment of ball bearings has not yet arrived. Full stop. Be immediately. Your contract is to provide good balls. Uh, where, where, where was I? Uh, you had just got to, uh... Good balls. Yes, uh, to, to uh, provide good balls by the tenth of the uh, of this month. Uh, you have a good deal of duty to honour this contract, etc., etc. That'll do. Now, now, if you could just um, type. Here, let me. I've got some. You certainly have. That's why I'm firing her. Now, uh, how are we doing? Oh, it's all right. I can read quite easily from there. That was really the moment I knew when I felt his warm hand on my shoulder. Were you nervous? When I was trembling. Not from nerves, more excitement. That, if you'll pardon the pun. Instead of good deal of duty, I typed... God, I feel fruity. I had no idea that my innocent typing error was going to have quite such a dramatic effect on him. He seemed to be lost. You reached a climax? Yes. And so quickly, too. Oh, it was incredibly exciting. Because he was a good lover? Oh, not just that. It was the feeling that we might have been caught at any moment. Of course, that would be an added stimulus, since your whole fantasy was based upon the idea of illicit sex in a chance meeting situation. Oh, I don't think I like the word illicit. Well, we can go into that further next time. Oh, by the way, did you take the job? No, no, of course not. Well, that would have spoilt everything. I don't want to work... Case history number 2420, Victoria. Daughter of the 4th Earl of Stockbridge. Educated and exclusive public school for girls, followed by two years in a Swiss finishing school. 
a society debutant who had one of the last coming out parties of any significance. However, since coming out, she's done very little else. A former member of the so-called Jet Set, she spent most of her time being taken around the world by some very eligible admirers. Or is she... She's now turned her back on that particular scene and has retreated to her father's country seat, spending all of her time at home. Her father is concerned about her, and she refuses even to meet any of the men that he has in mind for her as a potential husband. He seems extremely anxious to marry her off to somebody with a great deal of money. Look for the file. Check that Lord Stockbridge's account is fully... Today's appointment is for four o'clock. Please, go right ahead. Is it a help? No, it's a hash. Oh, I thought you'd given all that up. <laughs> Silly, of course I have. No, oh, this is just a good old cough your heart up tobacco. Honestly. You need it. Well, one must have some pleasures in life. Oh, but you could have, did have, all the pleasures that anyone can ask for. You gave all those up. Well, yes, I know, but that was different. Hmm? And Tropez in the summer, and St. Albans in between. St. Albans? Oh, didn't Daddy tell you about St. Albans? I am surprised. No, he didn't mention it, actually. Why don't you tell me about it? Well, St. Albans is where you will find the country seat of the Right Honourable Rodney Harrington Harrington. Is he connected with the Harrington Harrington Bank? Oh, darling. His father is. Rodney is more of a branch at the moment, just waiting to take over head office. And you visit him in St. Albans? Is he a boyfriend or a lover? Oh, heaven forbid. No, I don't visit. I go on an annual pilgrimage. Purely for Daddy's sake, not mine. I don't understand. Well, Daddy knows that Rodney is crazy about me, and he's been trying to marry me off to him for years. Yes. Unfortunately, Rodney Harrington Harrington is also incredibly boring, boring. And I can't stand him. And why do you go? I told you, for Daddy's sake. You see, Daddy banks with Rodney's father and I keep up this pretense of romance with Rodney just to avoid any embarrassment. I figure that we can be in the red if I'm in his bed. <laughs> Poetic justice, don't you think? What are you writing? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just a note for my files. Now, oh, where were we? Oh, yes, you were in bed with Rodney Harrington. 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 How long did you spend with him each time? In bed? No, no, on each visit. Oh, I don't know. Just long enough to tire him out. About half an hour, I suppose. Could we be serious, please? Oh, um, yes, I'm sorry, sir. Of course, sir. About two weeks, sir. Really? Two weeks. But really, I don't see the relevance of all this. Well, did you feel cheapened by having to do this? Selling yourself? Oh, I've never felt quite so self-deprecating. With a chauffeured Rolls Royce, my own maid and a butler, well, that was hardly a... Piccadilly pickup. Oh no, I never felt cheapened. With Rodney and his father talking about millions of pounds worth of share transfers over the pheasant, that was hardly possible. Did you ever consider marrying Rodney Harrington? Harrington? Harrington. Oh, 
At the beginning, when we first went to bed together, purely for the fun of it. What happened? It was awful. Rather like a banking transaction, really. You know, putting it in when you've managed to raise it and withdrawing it just when you need it. With Rodney, the solitude were immensely enjoyable when I was able to escape from Rodney for an hour or two. Unfortunately, they were few and far between. Victoria! Hey! Victoria! Gosh! There you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. Why, I'm sorry, Rodney. Didn't you get my note? Oh, yes, I got it all right. I, I found it on your pillow. I just jolly well didn't understand it, that's all. Hmm. To H.R.H. Gone for a walk, so F.U. Be back for more later, V. D. To handsome Rodney Harrington. Ah. Going for a walk, so follow up. Be back for more later. Sort of speaking in shorthand. Hey, listen to this. You're like this. A chap came into my bank the other day. Now, he had been at the RAC having a large G&T with his MP, who's an RC and a sort of BBC ITV VIP who was always on the key V about the OPEC. And he suggested that he see me about buying 40,000 shares BP on HP on the QT. And? I said NBG, MYOB, GI, GI, G. Get it, got it good. <laughs> Rodney, where's your father today? Oh. About the financial dealings that you're so clever at. Oh. Oh. Gosh. Do you really think so? Of course, father helps a bit, too. Oh, well, yes, no, he does, my little tiger. <laughs> but I'm sure it's you who really makes the big, important decisions. Now, tell me, who is taking over who? Oh, no, Victoria. I couldn't possibly tell you that. I mean, the shares of the companies involved are going to rock it up when this information comes out. I mean, it's, it's all undercover at the moment. Well, why don't we go upstairs and talk about it before dinner? Undercover. <laughs> 